Howdy again everyone, and today I'll be comparing two zoom lenses of the same focal length but of very different prices, the Tamron 70-300mm f4.5-6.3 Di3 RxD at about $500 US dollars, which competes with Sony's own equivalent 70-300mm f4.5-5.6 GOSS lens, which costs about $1100 US dollars, over twice as much. They are both full frame lenses for Sony's E mount mirrorless cameras, so let's check out the differences and find out which one is right for you. If you'd like to see full reviews of both lenses with even more information than in this video, then take a look in the description, I'll put the links below. Now, the first thing you notice is that the Sony lens is bigger than the Tamron and also far more heavy, weighing a big 850 grams compared to the Tamron's much lighter 550 grams. Bear in mind that the Sony lens has just a slightly brighter maximum aperture than the Tamron f5.6 when you zoom in compared to f6.3 on the Tamron, but that's not really a big difference at all in real terms. Both lenses are made of plastic and both have weather sealing gaskets around their lens mounts. Another factor affecting the weight is surely the fact that the Sony lens has its own image stabilization system. It's not the best image stabilization in the world, but if your camera doesn't have it built in, then that will be a massive advantage over the Tamron lens, although most Sony cameras do indeed have it built in nowadays. Another advantage of the Sony lens is that it offers you plenty of focus controls on the side and a zoom lock switch too. The zoom and manual focus rings of the two lenses work equally smoothly and the lens's autofocus motors are remarkably similar too, working at just an average speed but nice and quietly. Overall, the most significant differences in the build quality between the two lenses are the Tamron's much smaller size and weight, and the Sony lens's image stabilization. Other than that, their plastic build quality feels quite similar to each other. So, let's move on and look at image quality now. I tested both lenses on a Sony a7R II camera with its 42 megapixel full frame sensor. At 70mm and f4.5, the Tamron lens seems just a little sharper in the middle of the image, with slightly punchier contrast. In the image corners, the Sony is better, but that's because the Tamron lens suffers from a little field curvature at 70mm, watch my full review of it to find out more. Stop down to f8, and the Tamron lens gets a little more competitive, and at f11, the Tamron actually seems to overtake the Sony a little here. Let's zoom in the lenses halfway. At their maximum matches, in the middle of the image, the Tamron lens seems to have a tiny advantage in contrast, although the two lenses are both looking great otherwise. Over in the image corners, it's hard to see a difference, although the Sony lens perhaps resolves just a little more detail now. Even stopped down to f11, both lenses still look remarkably similar. And finally, 300mm. At their widest apertures, in the middle of their images, the newer Tamron lens seems to have a noticeable advantage in sharpness. It's also a little sharper in the corners. That sharpness advantage continues at f8 and f11, although the Tamron lens also shows a little more colour fringing. Overall, I was slightly surprised by these results. The Tamron lens is clearly sharper than the Sony lens in most cases, although the Sony lens doesn't have the same issues with field curvature at 70mm. When it comes to distortion and vignetting, both lenses show vignetting at their wider apertures uh, that you'll want to correct. The Tamron lens shows a little less distortion than the Sony at its widest angles, as you can see here. But zoom in a bit, and you'll see dramatically more distortion with the Tamron, so a slight advantage to the Sony lens there, overall, you will want to correct your images with both lenses, either way. Now let's look at close up image quality. The Sony lens can zoom into your subject much more closely than a Tamron, as you can see here. At the closest distances, the Tamron lens is a little sharper than the Sony, but has much worse purple fringing. Stop down to f11, and both lenses are similarly sharp when shooting close up. When it comes to working against bright lights, both lenses perform very nicely, resisting flaring very well. And when it comes to the quality of their bokeh, again, it's a very similar performance. Their out of focus backgrounds look slightly edgy, but not terribly bad. 
You should note that a Sony lens will give you very slightly more out of focus backgrounds than a Tamron due to its slightly brighter aperture, but the difference really will be very small indeed. So here's a roundup of the differences between the two lenses. In my view, there's surprisingly little to commend the Sony lens over the Tamron, especially considering the enormous difference in price. In virtually every way, the newer, cheaper Tamron lens is slightly better. I was especially surprised by the differences in sharpness between the two, but the difference in size and weight is quite noteworthy as well. The best advantage of the Sony lens is its built-in image stabilisation, although that's only really a major advantage if your camera doesn't feature it already, so it's a pretty clear conclusion for us overall. Anyway, I do hope you've enjoyed this video, it's my pleasure to put these reviews together for everyone. If you find them helpful, then do feel free to check out my Patreon page, where you can find all kinds of exclusive content and videos and sneak previews for anyone who would like to support the channel for only $3 a month. It's not just about increasing my personal beer fund, it really does make a real difference to keeping these tests going. Take care now.